Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show. Supernatural Strength with myself, the fat lad, Neil Pickup. And it's show number three. Episode three of The Life of the Monster. We're deep inside with the World Arm Wrestling League heavyweight champion. The hammer holder himself is here, Monster Michael Todd. If you haven't seen episodes one and two, they're going to be in the description, guys. Make sure you go back, check those out. We've walked chronologically through Mike's entire glittering arm wrestling career. Um, big wins, big experiences, a ping pong match win. <laughs> out, guys. Now, Michael, at the end of the last episode, we were we were sort of um, we'd got to a, what I think is a really pivotal moment for you. This is when you really started to make the transition from tournament arm wrestler into professional super match arm wrestler, following a big win that you had on Marcio Barbosa. And you said that after you won your last tournament at the Harley Pool, where you impressed people, you'd done a couple of things that got you on people's radar. Then you started to talk about one of the very best arm wrestlers ever to do it. Let's pick it up from there, mate. Yeah, man. So uh, Travis says, hey, you want to be a part of the NAL? Pull Ron Bath. Winner gets to pull me for the title. I'm like, well, let's roll, man. Let's do it. And I was feeling pretty froggy. So I was 250, had a 500-pound bench, um, heavy curl, heavy dead squats. I was, I was strong, right? Um, still didn't have a cute, I didn't, I didn't train hand and wrist. You know, I just, I just was really powerful enough. I, hey, I know how to arm wrestle, but I should have focused on hand and wrist. But so I'm talking a bunch of smack leading up to the thing. I win the Harley. I, I get interviewed there. I'm talking more smack. And uh, I, I probably kind of bit me in the ass because <laughs> Ron used that as fire, right? So, uh, and I probably shouldn't have, I should have just committed to a bit wrist press from the go. But so this is two things. This is my beginning really of professional pro format, super match style arm wrestling, but it's also where the nickname, the monster came from. Um, so at, up to this point, I'm just Michael Todd, right? Uh, you and I are sharing a room in, in Vegas. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thinking yeah. circus, circus, whatever. It was indeed and, circus, circus. What a place. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, they had, they came and filmed an at home feature of me. Um, and I'm, I'm doing some like 200 pound skull crusher to these girl bar, uh, I'm doing some pretty pretty impressive lifting to the point where the, I remember them saying that they showed that to some of the uh, pro athletes and like, dude, that guy's strong, right? You know, because this was biotech time. Mm -hmm. And uh, so when you see me, like, I go get in the shower, I come out, got a towel around me, you're on the phone with somebody back in the UK, you're like, oh, my God, Michael Todd's a monster. And that was it. The next day you announced me as Monster Michael Todd. But, I mean, that was the biggest people had ever seen me. And I was oh, yeah. you were a bit. You know? Yeah, I, I had a you know, thick chest. Thick shoulders, thick back, still pretty fit guy. Um, so I, I trained really hard for that match. And then Ron, first match, I hit into him. I'm trying to top roll. We slip strap. Try to top roll on the strap. He cracks my wrist. Ends up transition around, pins me. Round two, I try to get into more of a drag hook. Can I get around? He, I, I just never can get my shoulder. By round three, I'm just diving into my shoulder. Falls out, whatever happens, happens. I end up winning round three. And that's my first and only Right-handed win against Ron Bath. We've never pulled again since, like, maybe 2009, the Arnold Classic. And on that day, I think I had had some wars with Tim Bresnan and Don Underwood. And he was on the you know the A side just running through folks. So I never got – after around 2008 or so, I feel like I could have probably beat Ron. I just never got a ch chance to go one-on-one -on -one match with him again, right? And the atmosphere so, at that time when you got that first win. Because of oh, the – <laughs> yeah, I, would, I lost my, I lost it, dude. That, that's Ron Bath, man. Ron Bath to me, had, at that point in my life, if John Brzezink hadn't been born, Ron Bath would have been the greatest arm wrestler of all time, in my opinion, you know. And the whole so, place was absolutely Oh, pointless. my God. The Travis, atmosphere was nuts. Travis is up there giving his predictions, and he changes his prediction as soon as I win. He's like, oh, no, Michael's going to win now, you know. And then uh, round four, it's, uh, it's crazy. Like, I get everything I need. I mean, well, not what I need. I just won't quit. I transition around behind it. I go to press, and then I stop for a second to press again, and Ron shoves his elbow off the side of the pad and just takes the foul as I'm pressing. I'm like, oh, my God, because that would have tied it. But mm -hmm. we had to restart it again. Got around, got around. He gets crazy twisted on me. I'm holding, I'm holding, I'm holding, and then he just pushes me down, and I lose uh, three to one there. But it was, I mean, had that had that show ever made TV, they, ESPN didn't accept it because they had a biotech on the banners or whatever. They weren't an approved sponsor. Had that ever made TV, I would have been a household name. That was and an ultra-entertaining match. Yeah, but I, I mean, would have been was... a household name because that was, I fought to the death. You know what to I'm saying? To the death, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, my arm in the worst possible position yeah. ever. I recently posted one of those videos on Instagram. People like, how in the hell did your arm not break? I'm like, it did. I just didn't know it. You know, I had multiple, multiple fractures. You, you really did get into ugly positions. Oh, I yeah, mean, yeah. ugly, horrible career-ending positions. You know, there are there are, there are a few arm wrestlers that that do that on a regular basis, and you were certainly that guy. Uh, guys like yourself, Frodo Hoagland, throughout the career have gone to the bank on you know walking the line of uh, oh, between yeah. breaking and not. To me, it it was worth it. Mm. You know, I, I I you're gonna have to. I'm not quitting. You you see a lot of guys arm wrestle and you'll, they'll be pulling the pull and then they'll let up. If you pin me, I'm trying. You know what I'm saying? The only time you ever see me now let up is if you get me to my arm completely straight and I feel yeah. like you're going to break my arm. All right, you got me. You know, but normally I'm I'm straining as hard as I can when you pin me, you know. Now, that, uh, that, that, that result, I know you lost, but <clears throat> regardless of that, that result must have given you massive confidence to know that you're in the mix. Number one, you'd beaten Marcio, another tremendous arm wrestler. Then you get... Um, into a screamer with the likes of Ron Bath. How much did that switch you on from a confidence perspective, Michael? Oh, no, no. I, my confidence, I mean, honestly, you, you know as well, after that match was over, you invited me to come over to uh, Manchester. Uh, you got me on the vendetta in my first vendetta. Mm -hmm. Now, I still considered it a win because he put his arm on the table, but uh, Taurus did pull the day before, and Ron Bath beat him round one. Ron came through the B-side, uh, the Swiss guy busted his hand back. Somebody else busted his hand back. Ron ends up losing. Tars ends up winning the, mm -hmm. uh, the 100 kilo class. But the next day in our vendetta, he beats me the first match. I beat him the next four, and then I top roll him round six. So I win 5 1 against Tars Vakin. So, uh, but that was you. You got me the invite. Uh, you said, hey, Michael Todd to put on a show. And I was. I was at, you, you'll see. I'll get, boom, I'm here, and I'm looking for the camera. Whoa, you know, I was that guy, you know. Um, and that's the thing. People used to tell me, man, you need to act more like Travis. You need to act more like Travis. I'm like, dude, so I'm not going to be famous trying to be Travis Bajan. I'm going to be famous being Michael Todd. And mm -hmm. at the time, Travis Bajan was the most entertaining arm wrestler before a match or after the match. I felt like I was the most entertaining arm wrestler during the match. Because mm -hmm. during that match, and you see it, you see the shift. You know, there's a lack of confidence in me. But once that match stops and I realize I deserve to be on that table, that's when the monster takes over. My eyes glaze over. I'm a crazy person. You know, that's when that real passion comes out. And uh, that's been, the, you know, the story of my career. It's, that's who I was. I just, I, I fight till the end, right? But so that was the, the Ron Bath match, lots of confidence. I go over, I, you know, I beat Tars 5-1, huge confidence. Igor then invites me to come to Zlatan Trail World Cup. But at the same time, this is where I met Giorgio Riello. And Giorgio invites me to come over to the Italian Supermatch. Mm hmm well, I'm getting paid to go to the Italian Supermatch. I'm just getting the expenses covered to go to Poland. So I choose yep. the Italian Supermatch. So I pull Jan Puskazu, Christian Puskazu, who's a Romanian, but he's big a mom. Of Italy. Yeah. Big mom. Overall champ of Italy. So I end up beating him 5-0. Um, had an amazing experience. It was such a good time. Uh, first three matches, he fouls out. And then I pin him matches four and five. So I won yep. the event just him fouling. But, you know, I didn't want to win them all on fouls. I wanted to pin him. So I ended up beating him 5-0. Uh, but that was it, man. That, that was my international. My first international was Manchester, mm -hmm. pulling Tarsi Vakin. Yep. And then it, it rolled over. You know over what? Here's an interesting little fact for you, mate. <clears throat> Yourself and No Limits, Devin Larratt. I started your career with a match in PAL Vendetta against Taras Ivakin. No Limits, Devin Larratt, Dubai oh, against yeah. Taras Ivakin. Yeah, the year was was it earlier in 2016 or was it 2006 as well? Earlier that year, around that time, around that time, yeah, I think it may it well was have before been. My match. It yeah, was before yeah. my match, yeah, yeah, around that time, it would, yeah. may have been about a few months earlier. It only been going recently, you know, and yeah, and I think it might have been guys. spring or late spring 2006. And it could, have been, I, a, it could have been summer. I don't know. When I proposed both you and Devon at that time, both were questioned. Like, really? This guy? With no way. You know, at both times. Now, obviously, you, you spoke about the fact that what happened uh, beforehand in the World Championships with, with Taras and whatever. But look where you've both gone on to be. Oh, absolutely. Right. You know? Yeah, so that, yeah, I didn't even think about that. Both of our first inductions into Vendettas were against Taras. He lost 4-2. I won 5-1. <laughs> 
Get on my <laughs> mellow home. Yeah. All right, right. Well, wins. So, yeah, but that's how that that's how it started for me, man. So then 2006, you know, I did the uh, one in Italy. Um, two, I still pull tournaments, though. I still pull tournaments because I still remember I still had to win the national championship yeah, yeah. for sponsors. So in 2007, <laughs> oh, oh, I got up to 270 pounds. <laughs> I, was, I was round. And they're like, hey, would you like to come to Bulgaria to pull 110 kilo Alexi Bavoda in his comeback match? I'm like, I'm 125 kilos, or I'm 122. Yeah, I'll pull Alexi. If he, I'm 121, he's 110. Let's roll. I show up in Sofia, Bulgaria, and we ride a bus from there over to Gorna Rikovitsia, and they lie. <laughs> that, oh, you was massive. That dude was 125 kilos shredded. Like, mm. he's holding himself out like a flag at 275. I'm like, y'all some sandbag fuckers, <laughs> boy. Because, um, you know, they wanted to make him his comeback even more impressive. And, you know, I, was, I had a decent name at the time. John pulls Jan and Chescu. Jan and Chescu flashes in the first match. John wins the next five. I cannot secure a hook for anything against Alexi. And mm-hmm. even when I get turned, he's still up over me, right? So he's still kind of posting over me. So he sweeps me 6-0. Um, now, that was, that, that, was a, that was a pivotal match as well because I remember at that time you said to me that at that point in your career, you felt like Alexi was the strongest human being you'd ever pulled. Yes, he was. to that point in my career, that was that- the strongest man I had ever arm wrestled. But let me tell you something else on that exact same day. In Manchester, England, Devin Laird did the most impressive thing I've ever seen to Ron Bath in my life. Oh my! Oh my God! So I mean, here, I, I, I said that the other day on on what people don't understand. Dude, that he statued Ron Bath like this. I literally, didn't Ron Bath <clears throat> like a child on the? Do- oh my God! It that footage ridiculous. needs to be aired somewhere. I've never seen it released, and that's amazing footage. And it, it um, was just genuinely, I'm freaked by that. That If people dude, knew that was the most incredible display of, oh, my God, if you knew how good Ron was. At that point in my career, that match was the most impressive thing I had ever seen. Now, what I'm saying is, on that day, the matches that should have happened should have been Devin Larratt versus Alexi Bavoda, me versus Ron Bath. Because I was strong. I just didn't have a hand. But yeah, I that, that, strong enough to press through Ron. I just didn't. You, Alexi was superior. You know what I'm saying? Um, so that would have been a great match. That yeah. Devin Laird on that day versus that Alexi Voda would have been a dream match. And then I would have cracked Ron. So it'd be great. <laughs> 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 yeah. And then so that was May. So I'm 270. Um, I end up building a new home. Building a you know custom gym in my house, getting all my gym equipment, it was pretty awesome. So I start dialing in. In sixty days, I go from two seventy to two thirty five, all ripped up, shredded, abbed up, and uh, so I go to uh, Kansas City, and I win. Oh, wait, yeah, I go to Kansas City, and I win the Unified Nationals right and left two forty two. Mm-hmm. Well, this is ruler of the nation time, right? So I'm like, what the hell? So this is how stupid I am. <laughs> I cut to two fifteen. Now, I was 270 in May. For the Ruler Nation, I cut down to 215. It's me, John Rezink, Brian Brandon, just a slew of folks, right? And uh, my one and only right-handed win against John Rezink in competition was there. Oh, crap. Hang on. My battery. I'm at 20 Are you still there? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Right, we got cool. you. Yeah. So, uh, I'm undefeated with John. I just smoked Brian Brandon. And, uh, and Brian Brandon had just beat Jane Smith pretty convincingly. Mm-hmm. Uh, at the uh, Sean Ray Classic. Oh, I jumped over the Sean Ray Classic. Uh, so that was me and Jerry. I beat Tim, uh, Nick Zena that day. Jerry beat me once. I came back, shoulder press through Jerry. Jerry beat me in the finals. In a um, war. So, yeah. So, uh, but then we, we go to the ROT, and, and that, I was probably 255, 260, something like that when Jerry and I pulled. Um, then, like I said, I won the Nationals. Then I go down, and I beat John. So, John and I are on the A side. I'm planning on slipping. Right, John holds on all the way to the pad. <laughs> so I flash pin John Brzee. I'm like, yeah, all right. And then I'm so stupid that we come back in the finals. I'm like, oh, we just go on the strap. I should have done the same thing again and maybe mm-hmm. try to hang on to me. But he and he cracks me twice in the finals. Uh, but so I went from 270. Here I am, all the way back down to 215 again. And then 2008, I'm back around that, you know, 242, 
lean, fit looking dude. Yeah. Um, what did I do? 2008. Do I, I have any super matches in 2008? I thought 2008 might have been the year that you came over to the Oh, no, Arm Wars. Yeah. <clears throat> oh my God. Mm -hmm. So Arm Wars are spectacular. So um, I'm actually going to release uh, some of that footage too of uh, me and Johan right and left. Both wars. Fuck, just mm -hmm. awesome. And you do some great interviewing there. So that, that's some good stuff. But I, I was watching that the other day and I'm I'm a hyped up dude. Yeah. <laughs> I that's your, I that I was that was your first ever Arm Wars experience, wasn't it? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So my father, my father had passed away two months previous, and uh, that that match was for him. That mm -hmm. win was for my dad. I remember getting interviewed afterwards, and I teared up quite a bit about that one. Um, because like I said, my dad was my my dad. So I had been in uh, muscle fitness mags and stuff like that with the the Lipo Six, and my dad would he would drive around with, with the magazine with his you know with my picture in it. And he would brag to people. But my dad never got to see me fulfill my potential. You know, he saw me win national titles and, you know, WA, WWC world titles, stuff like that. But he never got to see me uh, do what I've done. So that, that sucks because, uh, you know, I went on and have done some pretty cool stuff since then. You know, I just, I think he's looking down on me and he, he's proud of me. You know what I mean? Yes, so, sir. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah that one meant a lot. That one meant a lot. Um, but yeah, that was our Wars Battleground. Uh, Johan Lindholm was the champ. I had some wars. Tommy Cockerell was crazy. <laughs> he, that dude was, he was jerking me all over the table, left-handed and fouling. Um, but yeah, that was a good event. I got, got both those awards right here. <laughs> yeah. The Inferno. Right. The Liverpool Echo Firefighters game. Yeah. Oh, no, this is, this is, the, this is Manchester. Okay, this okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, um, then after that, I come back home and I win the AAA Nationals right and left handed. 231. Ron Bass injured, so he doesn't pull the right. I beat him in a pretty good match left handed. I'm going to put that out on YouTube pretty, or you, uh, Instagram pretty soon. And then fast forward a couple of months, I go to uh, Salt Lake City. I take second to Ron right handed and I, I win the. Um, I beat Ron again left-handed. And then he actually ends up losing Don Fritchie somehow. And then I smacked Don Fritchie in the final. And then then you invite me over to uh, Liverpool for the firefighters game. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know if you remember your comments that day about how strong I was. but uh, Your hand, I remember. My hand was so yeah. strong. Yeah, your hand, I, your I hand so went strong. shook. I thought, whoa, it was Dude. Really yeah. soft. So I'm gonna tell you where I screwed myself because I remember I've always wanted that fame and I, I wanted to be the, the fitness molly dude. So I go over there and I win Johan six zero right handed. Uh, Darius can't remember his name from Poland. Oh, yeah, strong kid, six zero mm -hmm. left handed, five one left handed against um, Johan four two with Tommy. So I, I win four super matches that weekend. It was awesome. We had some good shows from that. Um, two weeks later, I was supposed to pull Mark or Devin left-handed Marcio right-handed, mm -hmm. right in London. But I get back home, and I had this is back when MySpace was happening. I had gotten a message from MySpace telling they wanted me to be in a perfect pull-up commercial. Well, I didn't think it was real, but I messaged them. They had me a plane ticket, you know. Mm -hmm. So I got home, and then like seven days, I had to fly to Los Angeles. So I, I'm this thick, strong, big, strong hand, thickish. And I cut like 12 pounds because I want to look good for this freaking uh, video, this infomercial. I think all that weight was in my hand. <laughs> my, my hand just wasn't near the same two weeks mm. later, right? So I go out there in L.A. I film that thing. We do like 17 takes. I'm sweating like crazy. And, and then I get the next morning, I fly to London from L.A., right? So I'm wrecked. Devin beats me left 6-0. Martial had that crazy war. That. Oh, my God. That's <clears throat> one of the craziest. Prior to me and Devin 2011, that's probably one of the craziest. Because I remember John and Devin Incredible. like, how the hell are we supposed to follow that shit? Yeah, <laughs> that was the thing about that day. Deep water um, arm wars. And we the, the headline match was John and Devin, the famous yeah. engine well, of the oh, God. Oh, between yeah. No Limits and, and, and John. Because at that time, um, Devin had gone undefeated. He was the heavyweight champion of arm wars. We brought over John Brzezink to challenge that, and that was the famous changing of the guard where he beat beat John. And 
it was it was all the chat, it was all the talk around that. You guys come on, and if you remember, Mike, there was a match just before that as well between Peter Sherber Peter Paul, and Stuart Hall. Yeah. That was a banger, and we were like, "Oh my god, that was an incredible!" And then you came on with Marcio, and it was better than that. And we were all going, yeah. "Holy!" So <laughs> Devon and John were sat on the side of the set, looking like I can't, we're getting ready to come out on stage, going, "Whatever we do now." <laughs> It's like anticlimactic, isn't it? Oh yeah. Was just but it was amazing. it wasn't. What Devin did that day was one of, that became the new most impressive thing I had ever seen. Yeah, um, that was that was that was phenomenal. Yeah, spectacular. And like you and I have talked about and y'all have talked in different interviews, what he did that night against me, you, Johan, Marcio, John was unbelievable. That um, may be the most yeah, impressive thing I've ever seen from anyone. Impressive. But yeah, so that was uh that two thousand eight was my arm wars debut, man. Mm-hmm. So now I'm still the heavyweight champ left-handed, the heavyweight champ right-handed. Uh, lost to Devin in the super heavyweight category, you know, left-handed. But we move on into, oh, that year I go to world championships. Another, like, I was, people were like, oh, you're lean. I'm like, no, I'm light. Like, I was just a light 240, but I wasn't fit. Like, I was soft. And um, I just posted those matches recently, me and Takarev, the most brutal creature worse than Mars. I'm just crazy. Arms, different colors. And then the very next match was a dude from Kazakhstan. Same thing, you know. And I ended up taking third that year. Uh, Norman Thompson beats me, and then I lose to uh, maybe a Georgian. Because mm-hmm. I just had those battles. I mean, you can't you can't pull WAF with matches like that. But I, just, I was like, I said, I wouldn't quit. I just keep pulling, you know. Um, so I took third there. So that was a bronze medal. So I've had, at this point, two, two silver medals, a bronze, maybe another bronze somewhere. So that's basically my um, WAF, you know, career. I never won the world. Um, but, yeah, so later on that year, they um, we come back to Italy. And who did I pull then? Oh, uh, Frank Lamparelli. That yeah. That was a good top roller. Yeah, yeah, really, um, really built for the game. If you don't know Frank Lamparelli, look him up. Very yeah. long, very tall guy. Got to be, what, 6'5"? Very long that. arm, big hand. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like he's, top, he's beating Trubin when Trubin was that same way. He's been yeah. a lot of guys. I think Lamparelli might have been one of the ones who busted Ron Bass' hand back at the 2006 Worlds. I think the dude, Savon Bailey uh, from Switzerland, and I think Lamparelli might have been the two guys that busted yeah. him back. I can't remember. But, um, yeah, so he beats me the first two matches, and then I beat him the next three, so I win three to two. Um, Johan and Jan and Chescu pull. Didn't Chescu beat Johan? Not Johan. Uh, not Johan. Jan and Chescu and Norman Thompson. That's Didn't the Norman? match, yeah. And I, and yeah, I, 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 I want to say it was, was the other way around. I thought on Chescu beat Norman's. I thought Norman's ran through him a couple of times and then. Might have been. He might have yeah. been like three to two or something like that because he was a 100 kilo world champion <clears> and Norman's was a 110 kilo world champion. So that match. I was on that up, card with Nimis. You I were? called Giovanni Nimis. Giovanni Nimis, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's Smack a good time. 2008 <laughs> was fun, man. Yeah, yeah. Um, so then in 2009, I'm going to also say, Michael, that that night was the famous first to hundred left arm. <laughs> that was me and you, wasn't it? Oh my <laughs> god, we all wrestled so many times. First to 100, and it was literally yeah. first to 100 matches. No, it wasn't the first anyway. 100. You had to win 100 <laughs> matches. Actually, so. actually had to win 100, and it finished something ridiculous. It's like one of us in the 90s, one of in the 100. Just remind everybody you won that, Mike. <clears throat> I, some I don't know, man. I, I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that but was good stuff. It was crazy. Oh, like, we really did. Like you won like a hundred, I won like ninety something. <laughs> yes, like ninety-seven. We were... But oh my god, it was good stuff, man. That was yeah. Nice. We've done some stupid. We've. I mean, that's the thing, man. I love this sport because of camaraderie, and that's the only. I mean, I get so much hate now, but it's because so many people are so new. I really think a lot of it's just because me beating Devin. You know, he because he brought so many new fans to the sport that they didn't know, and then I beat him, and hell, I must be a cheat, I must have did it. So I get so much hate. But guys, I've spent my entire life, I've spent 30 years dedicating myself to this sport and giving, oh, so, yeah, we're not quite there yet, but, um, so we're moving into, but, yeah, so, I mean, I just, it's crazy. I'm going gonna, gonna to finish what you were saying, though, there, Mike, because you backed off a little, but you did give your body to science, mate, the science of arm wrestling. And and I'm going to, you know, the, 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 the hate you've taken... Um, Ryan Bowen said it again the other day John Brzezink was saying it and Devin was saying it the other day it's just unjustified 
for the person that you are. And also, the the matches that you've been in throughout your career were some of the mo- This is pre-King's move. There was no King's move. It was They were the most brutal, jointy, horrible, ugly, scary, oh, God, it's going to break any second matches. That yeah. you, I mean, a number of those matches when we did the first to 100, I remember... At the time, George Uriello going, oh, God, you just stop, stop. stop. <laughs> what would happen? <laughs> you know, you're in the press. I'm top. And they were horrible matches, you know. Yeah. But it's just what you did. But the damage that you'd done to your arms is really big. I mean, you know, we'll, we'll come to the point where yeah, you've we'll, we'll, we'll get to that here in a minute when we talk well, about what, once I finally got insurance and the doctor told me what happened to my arm. <laughs> I was like, oh, shit, that's bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying. Um, yeah, so uh, what are we talking about? <laughs> just, you, you were saying, you know, you get a lot of hate online and stuff. and, and Yeah, then... man. <laughs> it, it, it does bother me. I'm not yeah. going to lie. I mean, I, I try to. I used to flip people off on Instagram. Now I'm like, hello, God bless you with a heart. Um, I just That's really you, isn't it, mate? Let's be honest. Yeah. Not you, you are more that guy. Let's be honest. You, you, you're not the guy that's going to go out and be... Uh, a, 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 an aggressive dude. You just—it's not you, the, the real you. So you have to yeah, get out. The only time I'm going to be aggressive is if someone disrespects, you know, my loved ones. Mm-hmm. And then I'm a whole—I'm a whole different person. Then but, you but know that's a normal reaction from most men, Michael. Yeah. That's to be ashamed. Yeah. Most men don't. Yeah. Oh, you, there's a, there, there is a there's, there's a line if you're messing with somebody's family. Um, yeah. You get to a situation, but you're not. You're a very warm person in many ways, and you're very, very well liked among the arm wrestling community. Um, and that is the facts of things, you know. Yeah, I, I, that's what I was going to tell you. Uh, I, was, I was blown off that. Um, so <laughs> this morning, I posted a video from 2009 Arnold Classic, me and Tim Bresnan, pre Kings move. Oh, good God. I'm in, I'm, actually, I'm putting some text. I'm like, don't try this at home. <laughs> oh, the <laughs> twisting more. Oh, my oh God. Oh, my God. It's so bad. I, I go back and watch myself. I'm like, I don't know how I did that. You know, I honestly don't know how the, I did the, that. The match, your gut, the, the, I'm just saying, we'll get to, we'll get to things later on, but I've had personal experience with you in matches. The famous match we had left handed in Mallorca where yeah. I know. That in the second or third round of that, it was, I can't remember the round, but I flashed you on one round and something broke in your. I know it, I felt it. It was, it wasn't a, not a little, it was was bad. Something. Yeah, uh, yeah, I mean. And and, and the, the thing is that you've done that a number of times where you've gone to that stupid break point position and continue to pull, where everybody in the crowd's been like, whoa, God. Any second, no, that's gonna, you know, yeah. the refs don't want to ref it. They're like, <laughs> they're like yeah. oh, I mean, yeah. do you scare yourself with those positions, Mike? Did In the you moment, scare yourself? No. Did you ever think to yourself, here we go? No, um, not once. <laughs> now I'm much more aware of it. Like, I'm like, yeah, probably shouldn't do that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Watched the other day with um, some footage where you pull in um, in the UAL the final match with John, and if you watch that match, the angle was above. It was pretty good, well shot, and I was standing uh, just over your shoulder that side, and I remember I could see the whole of your arm as John was on top of your arm, and your shoulder went the other way. But when you're on that angle and it's 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 looking down onto your bicep, the Horrific discoloration. Oh yeah, I was you. in that though. I was gonna win that match. I was gonna win that match. Had they not called that early ass pin, I'd have won that shit. I, was, I, I got was, that medal at home. <laughs> I, my shoulder was coming in, and I was pinning him. I Mate. was gonna pin that match. Yeah, and that was the weirdest, most twisted up position. Oh no, but I, I couldn't Kings move anymore because I had that two, two minute match with Jerry. I, yeah. I just couldn't do it. So I'm like, screw it. I'm going in on this shit. Boom, and I almost press him. I almost pin him on go, and then it's like here, and I'm just. You know, I'm just twisted in as hard as I can twist. That it's was, uh, the the oh, you were twi- you were twisting. Don't yeah. worry about that. You had the twisting covered. That was <laughs> down. And, we're, and we're, there's plenty more to talk about. We're going to come on to that in our very next episode, guys. But that wraps us up in terms of time for this show. If you haven't seen the other shows, please check them out. 
get back there it gives you an indication as Mike walks through chronologically of, of, of the wins of his aspirations in the sport. We're getting into the ready money rounds now. We're getting to where you, you started to really make your career in the Michael that people know now. Uh, so much more to come, Mike, but I want to thank you for taking the time out again, mate, to spend with us and, and give us this insight on yourself. Um, fascinating stuff, mate. And for those of you who are watching the show, remember, if you like what we do, please like, please share, subscribe, tell people about us. We're new. We're just getting uh, getting going. And um, hopefully we can make this thing grow a little bit. Till then, guys. Hope you, uh, your family and your friends are all safe and well. Crazy times out there. And we'll be back with episode four soon. Take it easy, peeps.